Let's face it, sometimes as humans, we have our good days and we have our bad days. But what if I told you that there was a way to make your life using Google Workspaces, which millions of people use, that little bit easier, especially when working from home. Okay, so unless you've been living under a little bit of a rock, Google Workspace is a collection of cloud computing, productivity and like different collaboration tools and products developed by our Lord and Saviour, <laughs> Google. It was first launched in 2006 as Google Apps for Your Domain, then they rebranded it to G Suite in 2016, and of course, classic Google style, they recently rebranded it to Google Workspace. But it's very much one of those where you can customise the space and like the custom domain and all that kind of stuff to optimise your needs, your productivity and your business. Now, I use a special internal version of Google Workspaces in my job at Google and I also use the public, freely available version for anyone when running this YouTube channel. So I want to share with you some tips that I use to maintain a super high level of organisation and productivity across my different projects and give you some tools to be able to communicate and work more quickly and effectively together. We're gonna to cover three main sections. We're gonna do streamlining your inbox. We're gonna do work more effectively with Google Docs. And we're also gonna do how to add some additional features to your Google Workspace. So let's get cracking with streamlining your inbox. So if like me, you're trying to manage multiple different projects and different businesses at the same time with multiple unique email addresses, well, this is the tip for you. Fundamentally, staying up to date with different correspondence can make all the difference in being able to like meet deadlines and effectively manage a team. Now the nifty thing that you can do in Gmail, which is part of Google Workspaces, is that you can synchronize every single inbox into one space and then organize it by a filter of your choice. So how you do this is you wanna turn on multiple inboxes. So you go top right settings, under inbox type, you wanna select multiple inboxes. And then once you've done that, you can pretty much creatively organize the emails that you want based on your needs. So like for me, I quite like this like high priority senders um, into their own inbox, or you could forward your emails from one account into another account. The fundamental benefit here, never miss your important emails again, and save yourself from having to switch between all your different Google accounts and all your different email addresses. Here's the process in detail. Head to the top right, click settings and all settings. At the top right, click on inbox. Next to inbox type, you're gonna to wanna to select multiple inboxes. Under the search query, you're gonna define your inbox with a filter. So for example, based on a send up, you would do enter from colon person's email address. You can add multiple senders by entering from colon and the person's address or another address too. And for emails sent to one of your other accounts, enter to colon and then like wherever your email is. So you at youremail.com. To enter a name for each individual inbox, under the section name, enter the specific name that you want to use, and then to change where the additional inboxes appear, next to the multiple inbox position, select a position, and remember to save the different changes. You can kind of do a similar thing in Google Calendar too, where you can add different email accounts onto one Google Calendar. So I have my personal account that has all of my different calendars synced to that one kind of main master personal account, which means at a glance, I can see all of the different calendar events that I have for that day, week, month, whatever I want to do across like work and personal stuff. So that's super useful too. So the second section of my time-saving inbox tips, and this is the one I use all the time to declutter and help me prioritize my time and energy. And if like me, you have way too much mail, yep, something pretty much like that, then setting up your inbox properly is a must and really, really only takes a couple of seconds. The tip here is effectively to use something that Google's built called Priority Inbox. And effectively what it does is it prioritizes your inbox into the must reads and the waste of time. So to use Priority Inbox, what you wanna do is open Gmail. At the top right, you wanna click on Settings. Under Inbox Type, click on Priority Inbox. And by default, Priority Inbox will separate your email into three different sections. Important and unread, start and everything else. If you wanna change some more different settings here, click Customize. Myself, personally, I have it set up in a Priority Inbox where I have 
inbox social and promotions which is another one you can do so anything that is kind of more marketing communications goes into promotions anything that's kind of like social media -y kind of stuff goes into social and then anything that is like my main emails and like to and from and like emails to companies and individuals goes in the primary box next up let's learn to work faster in google docs so I use Google Docs pretty much daily, and whenever I'm writing up documents for Google or scripts for the channel, I'm trying to find the best way that I can do that. And sometimes, do you ever have it where you have all of those thoughts just like in your head and you're trying to get them on paper, but maybe converting that to like typing is a bit of like a fiddle and you're not very good at like typing fast? Well, this first tip could have been an absolute game changer for you. Google Docs has integrated dictation features. So basically what you can do is you can use your microphone to write, so effectively automatically transcribing your thoughts with, in my opinion, a surprising degree of accuracy and getting me closer to the creative kind of flow state that I'm aiming for. So of course you're going to want to make sure that you have a working microphone with whatever device you're using and in Google Chrome, open a new or existing doc, place your cursor over where you want to put your text click tools, voice typing, click speak and speak your text. You might have to do like a quick little approval in Chrome so it allows access to your microphone from your device. But pretty much if you speak clearly in a kind of normal volume and pace, just obviously noting for any punctuation or formatting such as a comma, a paragraph or anything like that, then you're gonna be fine. You can even say words for images such as like a smiley face and it will produce a smiley face for you which is awesome when you finish just click on speak and i believe if you have a macbook specifically it has like the dictation feature completely built in so you can use this in google docs but if you just want to use like a notes app or something like that you can on a mac too if i recall correctly on to the second doc tip that's right marty hey, you're the doc doc yep <laughs> so this one is less of a productivity tip but looking instead to kind of like augment and synergize with your kind of creative process. I know personally for me that when I'm editing, sometimes I'm not sure if the changes that I've made are like better or worse than the changes that I had before. This is also really good for if you're writing like legal documents or terms and conditions or something for your company or your startup as well. So effectively, with Google Docs, it has systems incorporated to allow for non-destructive editing. What that means is it automatically saves previous versions of your documents that you can revert to at any time. Do you know those times when you're typing in Word and you forgot to save it and you can't recover the file? Well, Google Docs would have already saved multiple versions of the file that you're writing. Well, with Google Docs, you can automatically jump back in time to find a previous iteration of that document. This is super useful, of course, in creative writing projects, because you can quickly and easily go back to, you know, your last Tuesday's book chapter or poem or love letter at any time you want. Okay, so to find this feature, you wanna hit file, you wanna hit version history, and you wanna click on see version history. And then effectively, it will load up a full list of all of the different versions of the file that Google Docs has stored. And to restore one, what we wanna do is click a timestamp to see a previous version of the file. And if you wanna make a previous version the active version, i.e. you want the old copy to be the most recent one for whatever reason, then at the top, just click on restore this version. The next hack opens up so, so many possibilities, which is the ability to add extra different features and apps to your Google Workspace. Google has something called the Google Workspace Marketplace, and effectively this has hundreds, if not probably thousands of super useful apps from things like Slack to Adobe Creative Cloud to Mail Meteor, which allows you to send multiple emails in one go. Tons of really useful apps that you can add directly into your Google Workspace and just makes things on Google Docs, Sheets, Meet, just to name a few, that much better and also builds in functionality to those products that maybe for whatever reason, Google themselves haven't actually built. One of my favorites is the Slack add-on that you can add into Gmail. So effectively what this does is it allows you to send a Gmail email inside of Slack. So you can easily just click on the Slack icon, choose the channel, and then be able to select where that email is then shared within Slack, which is just super useful if you're trying to share like sales communication with your teams or 
you're trying to share like a customer issue that someone had and you can pop that easily and visibly inside a channel. So that's probably one of my favorite apps um, for Google Workspace. And look, another big benefit of working in Google Workspace is that all the programs are nested within Chrome. So everything is accessible in the same window. And if you use this tip, available with minimal searching. I remember being back in school, university, and to be fair, I'm pretty bad at this now, where I'll have like 40 different tabs open and beyond the point where you couldn't even see the little website favicon for each individual site that I had open. And that was how bad my kind of like Chrome tab habit was. But you always got that amazing feeling when you close those 40 tabs at the end of the project, right? <laughs> Well, now you don't have to be a tab hoarder like me. There is an option to be able to group all of these different tabs together to maintain their functionality, as well as color coding and naming each different group. So for example, if I'm researching a script, I'll set up a Google group for researching. If I'm doing some editing or graphic design, I'll have like a tab for like design work. So you can really easily group different things into different tabs and you know, just being able to see easily that green means research and like purple means design, that's super easy. So how to group your tabs, what you wanna do, open Chrome if you've not got it open already, click on new tab and then choose an option. To add a tag to a new group, click on new tab, right click on the tab and select add tab to new group and this will create a brand new tag group. Enter a name for your group and you can also select a color for the tab, highly recommend doing that. Add any additional tabs that you want to the group, and then if you want to, you can also remove the group. There's a few other different apps and extensions that you can also use for tab management, which I actually use one tab, for example, sometimes. If you've not already, check out my Google Chrome hacks video for more info and insight onto that. I mentioned earlier the marketplace. Well, how do you actually find the marketplace? Well, in docs, sheets, slides, forms, whatever you are, open document, spreadsheet, presentation. And if you're using docs, sheets, or slides, at the top, click on add-ons and then get add-ons. These will effectively load up all the different add-ons that are within that marketplace. And if you're using forms, then in the top right hand corner, click on more add-ons. And if you want to see like a description of what an add-on does, and maybe you might actually need to get more information for your workspace administrator to actually approve it, point to it. To see a full description, click on the add-on too. If you are not the administrator, by the way, when you get these to install, so if you click on the add-on you want to install and then click free and you install it, you might actually have to wait until your administrator to approve it and be allowed on the workspace before you are actually allowed to use it. So maybe worth going through whatever security processes you have in place to do that. So the final hack and the one I use absolutely every single day, and this may be my best one. Did you know that you can do docs.new, slides.new, sheets.new, and forms.new to create a new document using any one of the major Google Workspace tools. Well, that blew my mind when I found this out. Honestly, I use this every single day now without even a second thought and just any time I want to create a new document, docs.new and straight away a new Google Workspace document has been created and I'm ready to go. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Sub if you're not already and check out this video here, which is some Google Meet hacks, and this video here, which is some Google Calendar hacks too. Otherwise, have an awesome rest of your day. See you later.